Well, I hit over 100 subs, which in the grand scheme of things is a very small feat, but I'm not gonna lie. It feels kind of cool, feels kind of good. Still a very, very long way to go to make anything profitable. But while that would be great, I've really been enjoying just filming stuff and putting it on there and talking to people. It's been a really good experience. It's been overwhelmingly positive. I feel like it's good for my mental health. So I've been enjoying it and I'm gonna keep going on it. But I figured if I do, I should probably tell you guys uh, who I am because I really haven't introduced myself properly. So my name is Chris. I live in New Hampshire. Um, I've been riding for, oh boy, uh, 17, 17 years, 18 years, something like that. I uh, started out with dirt bikes and four wheelers when I was a kid. Um, and then my brother got into, one of my older brothers got into motocross. And of course, being the little brother, I wanted to follow in his footsteps because I thought it was the coolest thing and uh, started riding dirt bikes and that's how I really started riding motorcycles. And uh, first bike I ever got, I bought off of him. It was a 1973 XL 175 Honda four stroke. Uh, it was uh, on-road, on-road, off-road if you're not familiar with it. And it was a dog. Oh my God, that thing was a dog. It was not fast. Uh, and I beat the ever living hell out of that thing. You know, he had, um, he had a WR250 at the time, WR250F, uh, and a buddy of ours had a 400F, like a 2400F. And I tried to keep up with them on a little 175 on road, off road. Uh, it was, <laughs> it was not meant for it. We had, at the time we had 40 acres of property, um, and, uh, we built a little track at the house and nothing crazy, but it was, it was enough. Uh, and we started jumping it and I broke the rear axle out of it. I snapped both the, the axle, um, axle hangers in the back and just trashed the bike. I wish I didn't because it's, it's a really nice bike. You know, they're, they're a good little bike. It was an, a classic bike. Even at the time it was an old bike. It was classic, but now, you know, and it was really like, it wasn't in bad shape when I got it. I think I had like less than 10,000 miles on it. And uh, yeah, I just destroyed it, you know, kid being a kid. I went to a CR125, like 2001, 2002 CR125 that had been raced AMA before I had it. it had uh, White Scope Pistons, V-Force Reeds, FMF Gold Pipe, Shorty Silencer. It was a pretty quick little bike. I was considerably more svelte at the time. And uh, it was, a fun little bike. We had probably like a 25 foot step up um, that I started practicing jumping on. And uh, it was, a, it was a fun little bike. I actually really want another two stroke dirt bike. I, I miss, I miss that. I miss riding that. I don't have as much property nowadays. I'm since moved out of the childhood home. Um, but I have enough that I could do like a little track. Uh, I've got a couple kids, so I want to do something like that eventually. I think that would be kind of fun. Uh, they're still very young, but show interest in, in riding. My, my eldest daughter rides on my bikes quite a bit with me. She loves it. So I think that's pretty cool. I'd like to get them into it. It's just a fun, fun little sport. So after my XL175, I uh, rode dirt bikes for a while, and then I got an SB650. Uh, Suzuki SV650 that I rode for a while. That was fun. Uh, it was before I had my motorcycle license. I think I put like three or 4,000 miles on the first year without a motorcycle license. And then next year went, <laughs> went and took the test. Um, in New Hampshire, you don't need to take a class. I don't know how it is for other states, but in New Hampshire, you don't have to take a class. You can just go take the test if you feel confident. So I went, it was like 30 bucks, took the test, passed, got my license. Um, had that for a little bit. Got rid of that, um, and then I took a little bit of time off from riding, and then I got a, I traded a car, traded like a, a junk car that I had for a 82 or 83 KC650, and that's what got me into like the older bikes, you know, late 70s, early 80s, uh, cafe racers, so I cut that down 
put clip-ons on it, turn it into a little like Mad Max Cafe Racer style bike. Um, made like a little solo seat for it. And uh, it wasn't good, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed working on it. Uh, I, it's where my trend for alligator skin seats started. My CBR currently has one on there. Um, yeah, so I went with that for a while. Uh, almost got in a really, really bad accident. Narrowly avoided um, a really nasty accident. Was able to uh, just... The guy in front of me, thankfully, was paying attention enough to, to move over and give me enough room to kind of slip between a couple cars and uh, not get squashed. So that definitely, I had a small child at the time. My, my eldest was just a few months old. Um, so I, I parked that bike for a while and uh, ended up selling it. And then just a couple years later, you know, it's hard to give up. It's hard to give up riding. So I went out and picked up a couple of bikes and picked up a CB750, rolled that for a few years, started working on it, and uh, I uh, got invited to go down to the Tail of Dragon with a couple of friends of mine. They said, we went last year for a weekend. It's an amazing time. You got to do it. You got to come this year. You know, threw me an invite. Um, so I was like, oh, perfect. You know, I'll take my, my CB that I'm working on, you know, and... I looked at it and it's the same CB I'm working on now. And this is years ago. And I went, well, there's no way I'm getting this done in nine months. So that's when I went out and, and picked up a, a CBR. I was looking at a few bikes. Um, I, I always really liked Drixer 750s. I wanted the black and you know, the, the it was a K6, K7s, like 2007. Was just the pinnacle model for me. The black and yellow 750s just... They still do it for me. I'd, if I could find one for a good price, I'd still go buy one. Um, but, uh, you know, I was looking at a couple bikes. Uh, I really like the... I'm, I'm all over the map. I, I really like the Husqvarna's, the, uh, the 701 Vitpillin. I think that's a beautiful bike. Um, but I just didn't know if it was going to do everything that I wanted it to do. Um, so that's when I ended up picking up my CBR that I still have. And I didn't want a 1,000 really... Don't need a thousand. They're great, awesome bikes, tons of power, but I, I'd rather get a lighter bike that's a little bit flicker, you know, more flickable through the turns and stuff like that. Um, so I went with the 600, and I have no regrets on that. I, I said it before, they're terrible on the street, uh, but they're great fun. They're <laughs> hilariously fun bikes. Um, so that's what I still have, and just been kind of modifying it here and there, and trying to lighten it up to, to make it as light as possible. Right now I've got it just about, it's like 405, I think, 400, 405 with an absolutely full tank. Um, I want to put it on a dyno this year because I'm curious if TOS is truthful with their, uh, their dyno reports. They're saying, you know, like a 19, 1920 horsepower gain. It's like 19% or something like that. Um, it's like 20, 19 or 21 horse, something like that. So you're talking about uh, like 140 at the crank with that. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I'd love to find out. So I, I, I'm probably going to put it on a dyno this year, uh, just for shits and giggles, just to see if it's if it's true. Uh, there's a lot of smoke that's blown up people's asses by different manufacturers and what you can get and your gains and this and that. Um, it does have the full toast exhaust system high flow filter it has been flashed with their tune that claims these horsepower figures but <sighs> claiming on a piece of paper is great i'd love to see the actual data sheet from my bike because who knows maybe my bike just isn't doesn't like it for whatever reason and isn't producing as much uh so i'm curious on that hopefully do that at some point this year but yeah um other than that like uh, I'm a pretty average person. I'm not rich by any means. I am firmly middle class, if not lower middle class. <laughs> um, I was a bartender for a while. I hold the record for dropping out of my high school uh, with two. Um, never really finished, never finished high school. I have a GED. Um, and uh, yeah, was, uh, went to work at like 15. 
hit the real world, realized it sucked, went back to school, realized school sucked more for myself at least, and went back to work. Um, I'm posting this the last day of March. It's a special day for myself. Um, this marks 14 years uh, since my mother passed away. She had stage four breast cancer. By the time they found it, it was already in her bones and everything like that. So I lost my mom when I was 18. And uh, so it's kind of a special day and it had me thinking. So that's why I, I wanted to do it. Um, but yeah, now uh, I was a bartender for a while. And now I, um, due to some family issues, uh, my father's got uh, advanced COPD and he needs a little bit more help. Uh, I've taken a step back and between that and my kids, I'm now a stay-at-home dad, which is really weird for me. It's the first time in my entire adult life that I haven't made an income. Uh, I'm lucky enough that my wife has a very nice job that uh, supports us enough that we can make ends meet. We're definitely not rolling in cash by any means, but we make it work as, as you do. That's just how it is sometimes. So this has kind of been a little pet project of mine and uh, I'd like to continue to grow it. it like I said, it's, it's been a lot of fun and I enjoy it. Um, I'd like to start doing community you know, interaction more. Uh, even though my community is very small, I still think that there's a lot of people like myself out there. And uh, I'd like to bring that in. You know, if you have a project that you're working on or you know, you have a cool custom cafe racer or on-road, off-road or adventure bike or something that you've done, you've built or chopper or Harley. I mean, I'm not really a Harley guy myself, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you're on two wheels, you're doing it right. I don't really give a shit what you ride. Uh, I have a wide array of bikes. I currently have a Ducati sitting behind me, Ducati Scrambler. It's not mine. This is just here for... Uh, uh, storage spring sprung and then we got uh you know like a foot and a half of snow a week after that and now we're going to get more snow on wednesday uh so drop this in storage uh but this will be making an appearance in a video we're going to be switching out the uh the stock license plate holder and going with a tail tidy for it so we're going to do a video on that to show you how to do that that'll be fun um but yeah, so I want to I wanna grow the community, and uh, if you have stuff that you're working on, email me. It's uh, motone603 at gmail.com. Email me pictures about it. Give me a write-up, and uh, I'd like to do like a, a monthly, you know, community update so we can show what people are working on, what they're doing, what works for them. Just show off your cool shit. You know, I think it would be fun. Um, you know, I, I love looking at custom bikes and seeing what people have done and, oh, you know, how they solved problems. Um, as you, you know, I, I've told you guys before, but like, I'm not a mechanic. Um, everything that I do, I'm either self-taught or I am learning on the fly. You know, uh, I'm not trying to to pull the wool over anybody's eyes there and say, listen, this is the way you need to do it. I'm an expert. I've been to school for this. I haven't. I've just always worked on my own shit. So I know how to do some odds and ends on it, but there's a lot I don't know. And there's a lot that I'm going to learn. And that's, that's fine. I am the last person to claim that I know everything. There are people that I go to that have a hell of a lot more knowledge than I do. And I, I lean on them heavily sometimes and they're, good friends and huge helps and I appreciate them. But I like to try and, I like problem solving. I like figuring it out for myself. That's why my, my 750 RR project is so much fun to me. It's, it's, I'm, I'm going by the seat of my pants, you know, and, and just wanting to uh, experiment and see what works and figure it out. I had no idea if I could fit a VFR swing arm on there, but I wanted to find out, so we got one, and sure shit, it fits. We made it work. So, yeah, just figured I'd give a, a small look at the who the hell am I that 
some random dude on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of people out there doing this. Uh, and that's great. I just want to be myself. I don't want to emulate anybody. Actually, that's not true. If there's anybody I want to emulate, it's the Bad Obsession Motorsports guys. Those guys are freaking awesome. If you haven't watched that channel, damn, go check it out. The shit that they build is amazing. And they do a great job with their channel. It is the coolest channel out there as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just... Other than that, <laughs> uh, those guys are, are fantastic. I, uh, I don't want to try to be anybody. You know, there's a lot of really cool bike channels out there. But just want to be me and, and work on stuff. And some people enjoy watching it. And some people are going to hate me and hate my channel. And that's totally cool. It's not for you. And I don't have an issue with that. So pretty easy going person. But yeah, anyway, roundabout. Chris, just some dude in a garage, wanting to build a community. So I'll see you guys in the next one.